Hey guys, I'm Monsters Review, and I'm here with Future Gohan SSJ2. And today we're going to talk about why we think the Cartoon Network City is the best era of Cartoon Network. Now, take note, this is just our opinion, so for, for those of you uh, that, that love the Powerhouse era or love the Nudes era, whatever, this is just our opinion, and we're just going to let you know what we think. Yes, so I guess I'll go ahead and start off with a lot of the history of the city arc. Um, it started in June 14th of 2004. Um, that was basically when the Powerhouse finally came to an end. And uh, it, it went all the way until the 1st of June of 2007, and it kind of coincided with the, the Yes era. Um, and the bumpers were animated, of course, by the amazing Animal Logic. They've done a lot of work with the Lego Movie. Uh, and what else have they done work with? They, I know they did a lot of work with Lego Movie, but what else did they... They worked on uh, Happy Feet. Oh, Happy Feet. I love that movie. Yeah. And, of course, the infamous logo change also started uh, when this era kicked in. It was uh, it changed from the, you know, the classic rectangular block to the slanted CN just kind of being, like, retro and, like, hey, look, we're cool. We're not, you know, in, in a single file line. We're slanted. We're, you know, hip. Um, <laughs> and then, of course, the, uh, the CN City era almost entirely was led under Jim Sample's RIP. Well, he's not dead, but... I mean, he's been he's not been with Cartoon Network for the long, for a long time, and it's very sad because this place is going to shit without him. So yeah, I I, I actually um, just a couple months ago I made a tweet saying like on this day ten years ago Jim Samples resigned and that <laughs> guess what happened to Cartoon Network next? <laughs> yeah right, it went to shit. So now I guess we'll talk about one of the first and biggest characteristics of the city era and why we like it so much. The look, the way it looked. And the bumpers took place in the quote-unquote, you know, Cartoon Network City, which was kind of like a CGI three-dimensional environment. And this city featured a lot of locations from the shows that were airing at the time, like the Codename Kids Next Door Treehouse, the Cul-de-Sac from Ed, Ed, Nettie, and the Teen Titans Tower. And also, they create a lot of new locations for the characters, like a hardware store that, that was uh, kind of branded around Plank. And... Um, FUD's electronic superstore, which we saw Dexter at a lot. And then, you know, they also had your customary locations that you'd see in, an, in a regular city, like a theater and a laundromat. So within the city, we saw the 2D characters, well, anyway, mostly 2D, from the shows. And they'd often interact with each other in very clever and inventive ways. Like, you know, if you remember seeing Johnny Bravo and Samurai Jack at the laundromat, or Professor Utonium arguing with Number One at the parking lot in Malfs, and yeah, many of these many of these characters and locations from the city were actually from shows that had already ended, like Dexter's Lab and, and Courage. But uh, but they continued on and and lived in the city, and uh, yeah, I, I, at least this is what I think. The branding was so good that I was actually excited to to watch the commercial breaks. You know, a lot of people get disappointed when their show cuts to a commercial break, but. You know, I was excited because I just loved the way that the city looked. What do you think? Yeah, and one of the things that you mentioned that I think really made this era feel so special was the the whole point of the fact that everything here was 3D. You have these characters that all we've known is them from their 2D show in this 2D environment. But here are these 2D characters now interacting with other shows in a 3D environment. I think, in my opinion, that that helped really bring a sense of, of connectivity from us as the viewers and, and realism to the bumpers because really it, it's kind of showing that they're not in their shows anymore. They're finally here all together in this one city where they can all interact with each other outside of their own respective shows while also having a lot of aspects from their shows still in the city, such as, like you said, the Teen Titans Tower um, and a couple of other things such as the Powerpuff Girls House and the Mayor's Home and Foster's Home as well. Um, I also really like a lot of the interactions because there's characters that you would think would probably have interactions with each other, like uh, – uh, Mac and Blue and Billy and Mandy, but there's also characters that you would think would never have any interaction with each other uh, that interact to, with each other as well here in this era. And there's just so much – what I love about it is that there's just so much possibility. 
And I think that Cartoon Network, like, when they were doing all of these promos, whoever was, you know, heavily involved with putting forth the ideas, I think they really used and utilized everything that they had, you know, at their potential because they really did a lot of different pairs and a lot of different scenery together. I, I completely agree. And looking at it in comparison to now, we're still with the Cheka era, even though I believe the current iteration is called the Dimensional or whatever. Uh, but technically, the Cheka era has been going on for almost 10 years now. Correction, 7 years now. And even though it's gone through a couple variations, like, you know, the Cheka 1.0, 2.0, whatever, it still remains bland and very uninviting. You know, it's it's obviously very geometric-based, and many people kind of look at that as a nod to the checkerboard era. But the checkerboard era in itself was, was kind of simple, and I guess that kind of matched the time in which it was was developed in. If you look at it now, after they show us all of this amazing stuff with the vibrant powerhouse bumpers, the, the amazing big CN City bumpers, and the colorful nudes bumpers, it's kind of reverting back to simple, and I feel like that's kind of like a reverse innovation for the network. Yeah, I 110% agree, because honestly, what we're at now with the Check It era, it's so bland, and it's so unimaginative. Like, honestly, there's not even any point to the bumpers, in my opinion, just because they're just it's pointless. It's useless, mm-hmm. I think, at least. Now, tell me what you think about the programming from the CN City era. Oh, my God. God, I could literally talk to you about this for hours. Uh, the programming was was incredible. I mean, they've always had great programming, especially, I think, honestly, the some of the best programming ever was in the Powerhouse era. I think that's when the schedule for the for the show, or for the network, excuse me, was the most diverse. I mm-hmm. think that's when they had a lot of the Hanna-Barbera, as well as the Toonami anime. Like, you had Dragon Ball Z right next to Flintstones and Billy and Mandy, you know, right next to each other. That's something that you couldn't really, you that doesn't happen these days. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we got to see in City Era, that, that still happened. You still had Dragon Ball Z, you know, followed by Robot Boy, followed by, you know, whatever. Um, but I, I think it was a little bit done better in the powerhouse era. But uh, here in the city arc, there was a lot of diversity in the schedule. That again, it's just something that you just don't, we just don't see anymore this these days. And it, it was uh, the schedule was amazing. I don't really know what else to say. It was awesome. Yeah, the schedule was was full of variety, like you said. Um, lots of good shows and also lots of good blocks. And I guess those two things combined just kind of made for a great viewing experience. And not to mention, a lot of the shows that they did have were of different backgrounds and of different varieties. In itself, there was a lot of shows. And a lot of the acquired programming was good, a lot of the stuff that wasn't original. And yeah, a a lot of them were just very consistent in terms of of good quality. We had anime with shows like Naruto, One Piece, Pokemon. We had action, you know, Kunin Kazek Store, Megas XLR, Ben 10. Uh, Comedy with Camp Laszlo, Fosters, Billy and Mandy, Ed and Nettie. And then even some things like musical shows with Class of 3000 and High High Puffy I'm Yumi. And then bringing it to Blocks, the Blocks were also very uh, different creatively. We had Cartoon Network Fridays, which, you know, obviously piggybacked off of Cartoon Cartoon Fridays, which understandably, you know, wasn't as good as Cartoon Cartoon Fridays, but was still pretty decent. And then we, of course, still had Toonami. We had Maguzi, and then the Cartoon Cartoon Show, which aired older cartoon cartoons from the Powerhouse era. I'm probably going to get a lot of shit for saying this, but in my opinion, I I prefer Cartoon Network Fridays to Cartoon Cartoon Fridays. I know Hold Your Pitchforks, but uh, <laughs> I just – I grew up with that portion much more than Cartoon Cartoon – I still grew up with Cartoon Cartoon Fridays, but I think that was more towards the tail end. And then I transitioned smoothly into Cartoon Network Fridays with Tommy and Tara. Who, what was the name of the, the first girl but before Zinga, Tara? I think. Zynga, yeah, 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 and then, uh, of course, it went to Tommy and Tara, and uh, I don't know, I just really like their personalities, and I know Tara, she does a lot of voice acting now, and so she was a big inspiration for me when I was a kid, um, but correct me if I'm wrong, Cartoon Network Fridays took over for Cartoon Cartoon Fridays when the city era took place, correct, or no? Um, I'm pretty sure it was around that time period. Yeah, I, I yeah, okay, just wanted to make sure, um, but yeah. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I mean, even for those of you that are full-on Cartoon Cartoon Fridays purists, 
I, I, I think that you can say that uh, the, the, the hosts for Cartoon Network Fridays were very charismatic, Tommy and Tara. You know, you can make some, some decent arguments, like maybe you didn't like some of the little skits with the puppets, and maybe you didn't like all the kids being on set. But when I watched it, I, I was thinking to myself, I want to be there. I want to be. I want to go to wherever the heck they're recording this, and I want to be on set, and I want to be on Cartoon Network Fridays. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people trying to put forth the argument of, um, you know, this is probably where the, the start of the live action came in. And I, I would have to disagree because I think, even in a lot of the older Cartoon Network grumpers, we've seen live action in there before. Like, I actually just did a reaction video to a, uh, a set of promos uh, that's going to go up on my channel soon, where Harvey Birdman, uh, Wonder Woman, and a couple other people were literally in a live action world with, you know, live action characters. And th there's also been countless Powerpuff Girls and Johnny Bravo's promos using live actors and things. Uh, you know, this has been something that's it's not new. You know, it's been around for a yeah. long time. So uh, I don't think that was the start of it, but it definitely wasn't the end I mean, of it, that's for sure. It's it's not like the live-action element was the focus of it either. Like, the focus of it was the cartoons. It was just that the live-action elements were kind of uh, wrapped wrapped around the cartoons. And that's also not to mention, the live-action itself was kind of cartoony in tone. Yeah, it, it was. And, and, you know, your hosts were, were very cartoony themselves. They had very great charisma and charm and just this, you know, I really like their personas for being the host because that's the whole point of being a host. you got to be entertaining. you got to have a have a good charisma. you got to have good charm. And, and Tommy was always super, you know, energetic. I don't remember too much of Zynga, but from what I've seen, she was also kind of like a very good match for him because she wasn't as zany and, and crazy and up in your face, but she was a lot more chilled and laid back. Almost like number five. Mm -hmm. um, and then you had Tara, who was also kind of, she was almost as zany and crazy as Tommy was, but she still was kind of like a good offset to him as well. So I think, I don't know, I just like to think that, uh, that it, was a, it was a good pair, I think. Yeah, sometimes I still watch back that Cartoon Network Friday's DVD, and seeing them host it, it's just like <laughs> watching it back again. Yeah, yeah, they're, I love that DVD. And... Talking about the programming in comparison to now, there just isn't as many shows. I don't think the shows are as consistent in quality. And I guess also, I, f I feel like a lot of the shows share a lot of uh, similar characteristics. And both the way in which they're, they're drawn and designed, and also just in their tone. There's not really any uh, blocks. I mean, the last blocks I truly remember that stood out were DC Nation and Cartoon Planet, and those were however many years ago. And uh, a lot of the blocks I see now around are just kind of, like, short-term. And also, the schedule, don't even get me started on the schedule, just to kind of sum it up. Uh, it, it's, you know, filled with chunks of, of the same shows, and the same few shows dominate the entire schedule. And, for example, I'm not going to go too hard on Teen Titans Go, because I already know how many people ran about that all day 24-7, but that's been known to frequently dominate over 50% of the schedule in recent months and years. Yeah, did you hear about uh, how on Easter they had an entire marathon of, of Teen Titans Go? I thought that was so pointless because, like, they already do that. They already marathon that show literally every day. There was no point to have a, uh, you know, take up a holiday and try to make an excuse to marathon it even more. No, yeah, I remember seeing, like, this, this, uh, this thing. I think it was around the summertime or whatever, but it was a promo for, like, this Teen Titan Island Adventure marathon or something. It's just, like... Why are you promoting a marathon if basically every day is a Teen Titans Go marathon? <laughs> yeah, they've become worse than uh, when Sponge when uh, SpongeBob used to take over Nickelodeon's schedule. Mm -hmm. Like that that was bad. We all knew that was bad, but I think this is has become worse. I think because uh, when you when I turn on Cartoon Network, I literally can't turn it on. Literally, I cannot turn it on without seeing Teen Titans Go. Yeah, it's crazy. That was that was me yesterday. I was flipping through the channels and I see Teen Titans Go. I just instantly flip past it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, in my opinion, Teen Titans Go isn't horrendous. It's not as bad as everyone says it is. I think, but I don't. Know. Well, that that also kind of goes to show, and and this is something I like to point out a lot. No show should be dominating a, a schedule. Like, oh, great. don't get me yeah. wrong. I love Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Ed, Ed, and Eddie is one of, if not my favorite cartoon of all time. But if it was dominating the Cartoon, cartoon Network schedule, 
even though I might be satisfied with it, I know that someone else probably isn't, so it, it wouldn't be fair to, to people who don't like the show. Right, and I mean, we all, we both like other shows as well, so I mean, I would like to, you know, even though I love Ed and Eddie, I'd like to be like, all right, let's uh, let's turn on some Powerpuff Girls or something, or, or some Johnny Bravo, let's, you know. Yeah, I like to see a good mix of stuff, not just the, the same thing 24-7. Mm-hmm. So, now we're going to talk about some criticisms or, or negative statements that people have made about things that they don't like about the Cartoon Network City era, and uh, you can start with that. All right, so the first criticism uh, that people have is that many of the cartoon cartoons ended during the city era. Well, our rebuttal would be that they were bound to end eventually because, I mean, obviously you can't have shows, you know, going on forever. Cough, cough, fairly odd parents. That show has been going on for way too long. Even though not, that's not even on Nickelodeon anymore. They transferred it over to Nicktoons. Did they? Oh, yeah, yeah that's right. Because oh, I heard about, you know, th- that being the axing of, uh, of most Nicktoons. And they uh, they switched the animation over to Flash. Oh, yeah. Well, that's... I think they did that for Ed and Eddie, too, didn't they? Didn't they switch the animation to Flash? I'm not... I know that they switched it over to digital. I don't know about Flash. Hmm. Well, the whole thing about the rerun... is The whole thing about the old shows being canceled is that they still re-ran them during the city era is, is at least a main thing. Nowadays, you know, you we don't even see them. Like, even on Boomerang, they're, like, hidden at, at the 3 a.m. or... 4 a.m. time slots when nobody's awake to see them. Yeah, I mean, regular show ended a couple months ago, and right after that show ended, it, it completely disappeared from Cartoon Network Sexual. That's not to say, though, that, that regular show was barely hanging on right before it ended. Like, there was barely any, you know, regular show in the schedule at all. And that, that's kind of how it's like for Adventure Time now. And then right after the finale aired, you're not seeing any more regular show at all. You know, it's so offensive, I think, to the fan base for of Adventure Time. Because if you don't, if you remember... When that show was popular, it was popular. Mm-hmm. Like, that thing was, you know, it, a per, I think it was in the parade. Adventure Time it, is it, like, a, it's a pop culture staple of the 2010s. Oh, yeah, incredibly. Like, I, I remember when I went to, uh, you know, Comic Cons and I would go to, you know, this, that, and the other, that I wouldn't, you know, turn around without seeing a million Adventure Time things such as cosplay that inspired a huge amount of, you know, brand new fan artists and stuff to come out. And I would always see statues and balloons. Steven Universe, I think, is probably this generation's Adventure Time because I think because because that has also inspired a lot of artists and a lot of you know people to come out about being trans or whatever. Uh, and I think that this this show and Adventure Time kind of helped push a lot of that demographic. Mm-hmm. Um, but I still think it's disrespectful that you know right after Adventure Time has you know started to fall off. Cartoon Network's like, all right, the show's done, and then they just throw out the trash can. I never see that show at all anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, those those shows that were ending, Samurai, Jack, Powerpuff Girls, Johnny Bravo, I mean, they'd already been running for, for quite a while. It's not like they just started and, and they ended them immediately. Um, you know, like Johnny Bravo had been going since 1997, and it was 2004. Right. And there was like a, there was still a lot of sh- you know cartoon cartoons that were continuing on with new episodes through the CN City era. So it's not like right when that debuted they started axing shows off. Yeah, definitely. So the next criticism we want to mention is the existence of the Tickle You block, and our rebuttal to that is it was only two hours on weekdays from nine till eleven in the morning, and that was when most of Cartoon Network's audience was at school. That was at least when I was at school anyway. And I don't believe most kids in preschool watched Cartoon Network, unless it was for something like Tickle You. And it didn't even last two years, um, understandably so, because, you know, it kind of failed miserably. And even though it wasn't a good move for the network, uh, it, it definitely wasn't something that, that Cartoon Network's primary audience enjoyed, it was understandable that after doing a lot of fan service within the Cartoon Network City era that they were going to make a rather blatant business move by trying to compete with Playhouse Disney and Nick Jr. See, I remember this this tickle you a little bit, but I don't really remember what other shows what what shows they actually had on them. Do they you had um, Peppa Pig that was on there. I think there was one called like Harry and His Bucket Full of Dinosaurs. Yeah, so they were just kind of like they they were cartoons, but they were uh, obviously targeted towards like toddlers and and that kind of age. See, I'm su- I'm surprised they didn't put like you know Baby Looney Tunes or Tom and Jerry Kids or you know 
No, yeah, even though they, they still did air those shows around uh, around that era during the day. I love those shows. Yeah. So another criticism that people have is, you know, the lack of Hanna-Barbera cartoons in the city era. Well, our rebuttal to that is that many of the classic Hanna-Barbera cartoons had already been phased out by the time the city era had started. In fact, it's, it's mostly due to the fact that Boomerang had become a thing. You know, Boomerang was its own channel. You know, when Boomerang first started, it was just a block on Cartoon Network, but now Boomerang had actually become an, its own channel. It was its own thing. So they moved all the Hanna-Barbera cartoons over there. There wasn't really a real purpose to have them on the network itself because it's kind of like, you know, why even have Boomerang be a channel if you're just going to have those shows still play on your main network anyway? Um, but, yeah, I mean, I don't know. That That's just me. What about you, Tanner? Well, yeah, I mean, if you look at it, that's what the channel started out as. They acquired a, a ton of Hanna-Barbera, Warner Bros., MGM cartoons, and from 1992 all the way until, I think, you know, 1996, which was when they introduced uh, Dexter's Lab, you know, they, they'd been rerunning them 24-7 that entire time. Then they started to introduce the cartoon cartoons, then they had Adult Swim, so there became less and less time for these Hanna-Barbera cartoons. And I think that was the point anyway. You know, they, they'd already been running these Hanna-Barbera cartoons on the network for over 10 years. You can only run those those old classic cartoons for so long on, on that network who'd been, you know, trying to introduce some original programming. And also, uh, yeah, they had Boomerang, which, not to mention, they also had great bumpers and and blocks and uh, features of its own. So I guess this is a valid criticism for people who didn't have extended cable and didn't have Boomerang, but I did anyway. Yeah, you know, I, I think it, it it's kind of understandable that they kind of got rid of those cartoons. I agree. To go on to the next and second-to-last criticism... Uh, the, is that Toonami went from almost every day at you know 5 p.m. for like I think it was two or three hours to just Saturday nights. Now our rebuttal for this is you know we still had Toonami. It's not like you know post two, uh, 2008 when you know we didn't have it anymore, but we still had had Toonami and we still had great shows that were in the lineup. And pl- plus we had Maguzi to kind of fill in the spot during the week that aired, you know, Ben 10 and Pokemon Advanced. So we had some stuff to kind of, you know, fill up the week so that kids weren't, you know, it's, you still had action during the week, but it wasn't, you know, your classic anime. And then when you did want your classic anime, that's when we'd move on, on to Saturday nights where they had brand new episodes of Dragon Ball Z. I believe they were finishing up the Majin Buu saga at that point. Um, and then you had Naruto, and then you had uh, Zatch Bell as well, I believe, and One Piece. So you still had Toonami, you still had these classic shows. It just wasn't every single night of the week, which I can understand is totally disappointing. And at one episode a week, it was really difficult to keep up with your favorite shows, such as Dragon Ball Z, uh, because, you know, it's got such a slow pace in that show, and One Piece as well. And even today, we've got we've got Toonami back, but it's still at that one, one night a week, and I can understand, and, and uh, you know kind of compensate with you guys and be compassionate about that because it kind of irks me too. Uh, but it still wasn't a major flaw for me in the uh, City era. Yeah, that, that's what I've been having to do with Samurai Jack. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, Samurai Jack is, is – the new series is so short anyway that it's only 10 episodes. It would have been finished in like a week if the new Toonami was five nights a week. Um, it, it, yeah, I agree. I mean obviously – the, the Toonami wasn't as uh, frequent as it was in the Powerhouse era, and that's obviously a bit of a downgrade, but it's not that bad. No, of course not. And the last and final criticism we have to respond to is the fact that the logo changed, and our response to that is LOL. <laughs> I, I see. I've never really understood the hate for the for the logo change because, like I said earlier, I think I think we did talk about this a little bit earlier. Um, the logo change to me was it went from, you know, just the standard rectangular block of Cartoon Network to this kind of more slanted, this like, you know, oh, cool, you know, we're trying to be hip and cool, you know, where Cartoon Network would see N and the C is a little slanted and the N is a little slanted and, uh, look, we're so cool. Uh, but I thought that added a lot of, you know, I don't know. I think that added a lot of – I'm trying to think of the word. We were able to connect a lot more, I think, to um, the heads of Cartoon Network and almost what they were thinking and, and what – you know, how they thought this was a good move. And I, like I said, I love this new logo. I, I think that you know it adds a little bit because if you look at logos today, everything is so 
you know, single file line. Like, it, like look at the Microsoft logo. It went from being a wave to now it's just a block. With everything four is all simple in it. and geometric now. Yeah, everything is so simple and geometric now. And even they even brought back the Cartoon Network logo for a little bit, the old one. But even then, it's still like the lettering is too perfect. I think it's it's not, you know, I don't know. It's too it's too straight line. Like I prefer I I liked the, uh, you know, it almost it, it almost was them being like, hey, look, you know, Cartoon Network could be a little fun and crazy too, because of the way their logo was slanted and I don't know. Yeah, I I agree. They took the 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 letterbox logo which itself is, is classic but they they put a, an interesting spin on it and uh, you know they made it stand out a little bit more um so they didn't really change that much it, it's it's not that big of a deal and yeah excuse me for putting on my nostalgia glasses but i do think a lot of 90s and 2000s logos in general i don't know i like the way that they look they're they're kind of complex very colorful had a lot of substance to them whereas now you see a lot of logos and they're very um clean cut straightforward simple single color designs and if you remember this logo specifically actually went through a couple of reboots or not really reboots but a couple of changes of its own Mm -hmm. yeah like during the nudes era i remember from a lot of the the cartoon network dvds i got at the time there were like it was still like that that cn slanted logo but like the shaded parts were were a different color like there was a purple variation and there was like an orange variation and a green as well, yeah. Yep. Yeah. And even with the nudes era, like you were mentioning earlier, it, you know, they'd always splatter on the logo and change it to a different color. Yeah, yeah. So it had a couple of rebrands of its own. But, uh, yeah, I think we covered everything that we wanted to talk about at the, about the city era. Anything you wanted to finish off with? Yeah, that, that's we basically just kind of summarized um, why we like Cartoon Network City so much and uh, why we think it's the best. And... When we when we say it's the best, we're not you know saying that all of the other ones are bad. Like we mentioned, the powerhouse era is still amazing, very very close runner up, and there's also the nudes era and th- yeah, there's a lot of other great moments and times in Cartoon Network history. But yeah, we we just kind of explained why we think Cartoon Network City is the best. And all I have to say is, uh, Cartoon Network City Summer of 2005, best time to be a Cartoon Network fan and to be living in Cartoon Network. That's all I'm going to say. That's how I'm going to end this. Cartoon Network Summer 2005. Boom. I agree. Um, So, if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like below. Uh, Comment what you think about the Cartoon Network City in the comments. And that's about it. Make sure you also subscribe to Future Gohan SSJ2. Check out his channel. He's got some great stuff. Thank you guys so much for having me and uh, I guess we'll catch you guys in the next collaboration video. Yeah, see you guys later. Sexual Sauce, Cartoon Network City 2005. <laughs> <laughs>